Welcome. In this tutorial, we'll get us started on the first project for ITD 130 database concepts and fundamentals. Tonight, we will learn how to work with a data modeling tool called SQL DBM. This tool, this tool we use for most of this semester on the first three projects. Let's take a look at it. First thing we have to do is to sign up on the database, I'm sorry, the website, sqldbm.com. Come to this website, and first thing we need to do is to sign up. After you sign up, from there on out, you just sign in. To sign up, click on the sign up button. And you can enter your uh, school pa school password. I'm sorry, school email. Uh, put in a password. Organization size. Probably put one. Or and you click register after you agree to the terms and conditions, of course. Um, or you can sign up using one of these common links down below. Once you do that. Uh, then you will go to the page here. And what I'm going to do to, today is show you how to do Project 1 in SQL DBM. Project 1, I'm going to show you everything you have to do. All you have to do is mimic what I'm doing. And the purpose of this project is to show you how to use this modeling tool. This is a pretty nice little modeling tool. I think you'll uh, enjoy the simplicity of it and all that it does for you. And it will make our data modeling much easier. So we're going to start out with creating some entities. Data modeling is called ERD or Entity Relationship Diagrams. So we're going to create a series of entities and a series of relationships between them. So we'll start out with a new project. When you come to a new project, we will put in a project name up here of Project 1. Um, and this will be our project. Now one of the nice things about SQL DBM is there is a little tutorial here to um, show you how to use some of the tools, some of the features of this tool. I'll let you click on that on your own time. I'm not going to spend tutorial time doing that, but I suggest you click on that and it gives you a nice little short tutorial on how to use it. So what we're going to do is create a few uh, entities and to do that we will click on the add table. Now we'll use the terms entities and tables uh, synonymously, is that the right word, throughout this uh, this course. Let's click on that and we'll click in here. Now we'll create a course table. So we give it the name of course press the tab key and notice here it's got a little key over here we need some way to uniquely identify any one course in our collection of course entities so I usually put the same name as the table or the entity plus ID behind it press the tab key and it's asking for the data type I'm going to put in INT INT means integer. And I'll press tab a few times here. Now it's bringing us to what attributes, or if you're thinking of a table, what columns will go into this entity. So most courses have a name. And I'm going to put in a var char here. Var char is um, variable length characters. Also, it's a combination of letters, numbers, and other characters. 
and which has a length of uh, no more than 50 characters. I'm going to leave it not null. Turn down. We'll talk about null later. Now I want department. This will also be a, I'm sorry, this will be a char. Char means fits length characters. Uh, we'll have a number. This is the course number. This will also be a char. We have how many credits the course is. Credits is usually an integer, or it is an integer, like three credits, four credits. I'm going to put an int in here. I'm going to change this to null. And we'll discuss, like I said, we'll discuss later what null and not null means. To change it, you can either click on it or I just press the uh, the space bar. And the last attribute, oh, that'll be it. So we'll stop there. And if I click away from here, it shows my course entity. There's the name of the entity is course. The uh, key, the PK means primary key. We'll discuss that later. Data type is int. It has four attributes, name, department, number, and credits. Um, credits is nullable. The other three are not. And here are the data types. Now I'm going to create another entity over here. I'm, have, I'm going to you click on this button up here, it will hide this column over here. I'm going to click on that. Again, I'm going to click on Add Table. And we'll click on over here. Now, every course has a teacher. And we'll put in teacher in here. Again, we'll put in teacher ID. Int. Hit tab a couple of times. We have first name. And notice we don't put spaces in here. And what I do is I put the first character of each word as uh, uppercase and the other character is lowercase. We'll do another bar char here. Otherwise well, it changes that to end bar char. Okay. And we'll put last name. And we will do phone number. And we will make phone number not null. Again, I use the space bar. You could click on it or use the space bar. And we'll do that. So now we have a course entity and a teacher entity. Now what we want to do is we want to create a relationship between these two entities. Notice up here we have two options for creating relationships. In this case we will use the one on the right which is a non-identifying relationship. If I click on this, it says click on the parent table for a non-identity identifying relationship because a course has only one teacher the teacher will be the parent table and we click over here and you notice that it took the primary key over here and put it down here as a blue this means foreign key that's what the FK means and we'll discuss that later as well purpose of this tutorial is to show us how to use the tool. Not to necessarily understand exactly what we do, but how to use the tool. So, um, notice here's our relationship between the two. And it even shows us, my, we can click on it, highlights how it's related to each other. Okay. Let's do another one. I'm going to do a bus route and students that are on the bus route. I'm going to take my table, put it down here, we're going to say bus route. Again, notice we don't put spaces in here. Put bus route ID int. 
And this would be fairly simple. It's going to have a name. Or uh, the name is bar char. I'm sorry, the data type is bar char 50. And we'll have a driver uh, as well. I click off of here and I see my bus route. I'm going to hide me for a little bit. And we will come back and add another attribute over here. This will be student. We have student ID. Int. We have first name. We have last name. And we have, that's it. We have these two. Now this time I'm going to create a relationship the other way. Again, I choose non-identifying. And I click on the parent over here. And the child over here. And again, notice when I click on this, it's showing me bus route ID is in blue on the student. And it links up to bus route ID on the bus route. All right. Let's add a few more here. This is going to be a little bit different. I'll uh, create another table. What I want to do now is show movies and the cast members who are in the movie. So I'm going to click on this. We're talking movie. And I have a title for the movie. And I have a release date. Now release date is a date. I'm going to put date in here. The data type is date. Alright. I'm going to create another entity. And these should be the cast members. And I will have the first name and the last name. Of the cast member. Okay. Now, uh, this is called a many to many relationship. We'll discuss that later. But what I'm saying is a movie can have more than one cast member, and a cast member could be in more than one movie. I'm going to create another entity to show the relationship between those two. I'm just going to call this cast. In this case, now I'm going to create a identifying relationship, which is this, this knob here, click on that, and it's saying click on the parent table to add an identifying relationship. That would be the movie, and then click on child to complete it. Child. Okay. Notice here my relationship line is solid as opposed to the other ones that were dotted. I'm going to do the same thing again. Click on my relationship, identify relationship, click on cast member, and then click on cast. And notice here that my primary key here is a combination of movie ID and cast member ID, and I have both PK and FK. And because this relationship was identifying, it forced that for us, which is a good thing. 
All right, let's do one more and we'll be done. Create another table. This will be, I want to know all a book and all the authors. So I have a title and ISBN. I'm going to create one for the author. Author ID, INT, and I have first name and last name. And I'm done with author. Again, I'm going to do the same thing I did with my movie and cast. I'm going to create another table. I want to know who the authors are for each book. Line this up a little bit. I'd like for it to be pretty. I'm going to take my identifying relationship. Go from the parent to the child. Click on identifying relationship. Go from parent to child. And so I now have a primary key of the book ID and the author ID. And they are also foreign keys. So I have PK and FK. And they're kind of hard to fit in this little screen here. I'll make it really small. There we have, uh, so this is your project one. All you have to do is mimic what I did, and you will be good to go. Uh, now I'm going to show you later in another tutorial how to grade it and how to submit it. But for now, I'm going to click Save. Oh, I already have one called Project 1. I'm going to call mine Project 1A. How's that? You would name yours Project 1, but I already have one. Then we'll call it Project 1, and we are done. Done for now. Like I said, later on I'll show you another tutorial how to submit it for uh, a grade. Uh, but for now, all you have to do is to mimic what I did here. And you'll be uh, you'll be good. So it's good to have you here. I hope this was helpful to you. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Take care.